Hallelujah. Uh, last Sunday, we started to look at the subject of um, uh, uh, putting on the armor of God in spiritual warfare and in the battles of life. We started to look at, we started looking at how we got to have our feet, right? Fitted. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're going to go to battle, you must be able to at least stand. Not just stand, but stand firm. Amen. Stand firm. You must be able to stand your ground, whatever the battles of life that may come to you. Our test is taken from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. And we can read it again. It says from verse 10, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor, not just some, hallelujah. So there are several armor that we need to put on, amen. So that's why the scripture says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes, the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh, it's not against blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, verse 13 says, therefore, put on the full, it says it again, therefore, put on what? The what? The full armor. I think if anything else that we need to understand from this teaching is that there is a full armor. Amen. Glory to Jesus. You are getting ready for battle. There is a full armor. Uh, if you take one part of the armor and you don't take the other armor, you know that it may not, you may not get the right uh, protection that you really needed for that warfare. So that is full armor and we're getting an understanding what those armors are and we, how we need to clothe ourselves with those. Uh, verse 13 again says, therefore put on the, it didn't just say the armor, it says the full armor of God so that when evil days come, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, verse 14 says, do what? Stand firm. Now, it started to talk about the, those armor. It says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breast plate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel. Amen. Did they say with the gospel? Did they stop there? That's a gospel that your feet must be fitted with. Amen. That's the gospel that you preach to bring people to Christ. Hallelujah. Now it's different from the gospel that you put on for warfare. And that's why it says the gospel of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to sometimes try to break things down so that we can get a better understanding. So, this test is not talking about going out to preach. You know, the Bible says, uh, um, blessed are those who go out and preach um, the, the gospel, the good word of God. It, it, that's true. But here it's talking about warfare. And you and I must fit our foot with the gospel of peace, the good news of peace. Now in verse 16, it says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We started last week talking about how you have to have your feet fitted with the gospel the gospel, not just the gospel, but the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is the gospel that gives you peace, that, that enables you to stand in peace. It's taken from the word of God, but the ultimate goal of that gospel is that in any battle, you can be at peace. That no matter what is coming towards you, you can still be at what? At peace. Knowing that of a truth, he has already overcome 
the world. It says, be of good cheer because I have already overcome. It says, trials will come, tribulations will come, but you have to have peace in order to face any battle. You know, it's the one way is at peace that will win the battle. So, the gospel of peace, and we talked about that last Sunday. If you uh, not here last Sunday, we we'll encourage you to go and watch the recording from last Sunday so that you can, uh, you can get what we talk about. Actually, and on Wednesday, those of us who attended our Bible study, we talk about Jehovah Shalom. The God who is our peace. In actual fact, someone said that that God himself, himself is peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we talk about peace, we talk about comfort. We talk about contentment. We talk about harmony. 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 We talk about being free of agitation. Amen. We talk about being free of discord in your home, in your family. That's harmony. Shalom. Jehovah. Peace. Jehovah our peace. And I pray that the peace of God will reign in your life in the name of Jesus. So in whatever situation we find ourselves, whatever we are going through, let's put on the armor of the gospel of peace. Our feet. It's then that we can stand. Amen. That is when you are able to do what? Stand your... Last Sunday we declare a law here that you have to do what? Stand your ground. It doesn't matter what it is. Stand your ground. Whatever matter what you are facing. Stand your ground. Amen. God is able. Hallelujah. So we, we looked at that and um, today we're going to look at another armor that God wants us to put on. Amen. Put on the full armor. And this morning we want to look at that armor that is called the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. The what? Hallelujah. It says that we should put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Now, what does it mean to put on the breastplate of righteousness? Before we talked about that, a Roman soldier, when they go to war, they have, you know, we talked about the food that they put, the shoe that they put on last Sunday. We have the, a, what do you call it? We had a, uh, a picture, you know, of that shoe with iron rod underneath the feet so that they can do what? They can always stand firm. Now, as a, a Roman soldier, when they go to war, they put on a breastplate. Now, there are two types of breastplate. There are one that is made with leather. There is one that is made with leather. They, they put that on. And the, there is also another one that is made with metal. There is a metal breastplate, and also there is a, 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 a leather breastplate. But the most important thing is that they always put on a breastplate. The one that is made of leather is made with every strips of linen that hung down very low. It starts usually, the, 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 the breastplate will start from the base of their neck all the way down to the upper thigh. That's how the breastplate is always fitted. Hallelujah. That's what the breastplate is always fitted. The one molded with chest, it covers the vital area. They cover the vital area. They cover the vital organs. Now, the organs that they try to protect is number one. Who knows? The heart. And then, the second organ that they try to protect is called the viscera. The viscera in, uh, in uh, um, anatomy world, you're talking about the intestine, you know, all the organs in the lower part of the body. They try to protect those areas. You all know that uh, in a warfare, if the sword passes through one's heart, that is the end of the battle. Or even when it passes through one's uh, stomach or intestine and that could be internal bleed. So they always protect those two areas. Now, what does that mean for you and I as a believer in a spiritual warfare? 
in a spiritual warfare, you don't have a physical sword coming to you. You don't have uh, a physical arrow thrown at you. But the Bible talks about the very death of the enemy that comes towards us all the time. Hallelujah. And we have to protect where? Our heart. Amen. What does Proverbs 23 verse 7 says? Hallelujah. In any warfare that you may be in, Proverbs 23 verse 7 um, talks about you and your heart. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says that hmm. eat and drink, it says to you, but his heart is not with you. That's not the scripture I'm looking for. 423. What does that one say? Yes, yes, thank you. 420. Hallelujah. 423, thank you. Proverbs 423. It says, above else, above all things. Hallelujah. It says, guide your heart with all diligence. Because that's where all the issues of life flows from. In spiritual warfare, the reason why you have to put on the helmet of, I mean, the breastplate of righteousness is that you have to protect your heart. The heart is the place where every battle of life starts from. If the enemy can gain entrance into your heart and be able to overcome or defeat you in your heart, that is the end of the warfare. Remember the Caleb and Joshua and the 12 tribes of children, uh, Israel that went to spy the foreign land, right? Some of them came back and said and gave the report that, look, those people, they are the sons of Anakim. They are giants in the land. And we don't think that we can ever, ever do what? Ever defeat them. They haven't been in the land physically. They haven't been in the warfare yet. But they have already alluded victory to the enemy. That is how it happens. So we have to always protect our heart. Because that is the first place where victory or defeat is a certain when you are in any battle. Hallelujah. Amen. So your heart must be protected. What was, must it be protected with? It must be protected with the breastplate of righteousness. We'll talk about that a little bit. When you talk about your heart, it is the heart. It begins when if a man is going to be lost in a sin. It begins in the heart. You try it a little bit and your heart is telling you it doesn't matter. It's okay. Uh, everybody does it. Your heart will be telling you, you know, giving you several excuses. And when you start to buy into it, it becomes part of you. And you, become, you start to do what? To tolerate that particular heart. Because your heart has already been used to it. And your heart has given you permission. So everything starts from the heart. If you are going to win this warfare, it starts from the heart. Now, somebody comes and gives you a report. It could be a doctor's report. It could be situations and challenges that you are going through in life. And if you believe in your heart that you cannot overcome it, tell me, we can help you. That's the end of it. That's the end of it. So it's important that you protect your heart with what? With the breastplate of righteousness. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have to protect your heart because every battle of life starts from your heart. Now, when we talk about the second area where that is being protected, which is the viscera, your intestine, hallelujah. When we look at how the reference intestine in the Roman Empire or how you refer that to in a spiritual warfare, when you look at intestine, you're referring to your emotions. Amen. So you have to protect. You know why they refer the intestine is lacking to emotions? Because when you are going, when you have a high emotions, maybe your adrenaline starts to flow. Where do you feel it first? Your, your stomach, your intestine. You know, you're feeling an emotion, you start to first, you start go to the bathroom. You see, have you seen people just because of their emotional feeling and they run to the bathroom, they can't stop what comes out? Yes, your emotions. 
the, that's your viscera. So you have to protect your emotion. People have jumped from the frying pot, is that how they say it? Into the from the frying pan, yeah, frying pan. They've jumped from the frying pan into what? Into fire because of what? Wrong emotions. Wrong emotions. You have to protect your emotions. So you have to protect your heart and you have to protect your viscera. You have to protect your thoughts and you have to protect your emotions. Thoughts are different from emotions. Thoughts will come when you entertain certain thoughts. It becomes your what? Your emotion. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that particular individual. Hallelujah. So it is important that we need to protect those two areas. Because if you don't protect those two areas, it's difficult to win the battles of life. Now, what the scripture says here is that we must protect it with the breastplate. Not just breastplate, but it talks about the breastplate of righteousness. So what is the breastplate of righteousness? There are three, breast, there are three types of righteousness I want to talk about. But there are two that I think we need to work with. Hallelujah. That's the breastplate of self-righteousness. Amen. There are individuals, there are people who try to protect their heart, protect their viscera with the breastplate of self-righteousness. Hallelujah. When people believe that they are going to have victory or they are going to be blessed or they are going to move forward in life because of what they can do. That's what is called self. People think that they are blessed because of what they put in. The efforts that they put in only is why they have it. I got this all by the works of my hand. I acquired this all by the works of my hand. The worst thing is to develop a self-righteousness to make you think that it's because you are self-righteous. That's where you are going to make heaven. That's that kind of self-righteousness. Let's look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 18. Luke 18. Uh, from verse 10. Luke 18 from verse 10. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture is talking about two men here. Hallelujah. Two men, they went to the temple. Hallelujah. From verse 18. It says, two men went to the temple. Is that from, did I say verse 18? From verse Luke 18 from verse 10. It says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like the other uh, people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Uh, I fasted twice a week and I give a tenth of all that I get. But this tax collector stood at the distance, but the task collector did what stood at his distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Verse 14. Verse 14. Okay, need to get my Bible ready. I think the internet or the system, hallelujah. It says, I tell you that but it will be more bearable for Tara and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Is that the scripture? It says, but I tell you, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be what? Will be exalted. Hallelujah. So, there's a tendency that we can put on self-righteousness, even in warfare of life, in the battles of life, that no, I don't deserve this because this so, 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 and so, because this so, so, and so, just like we saw there. But there's another 
second type of righteousness that God is wanting us to put on. Hallelujah. If you look at all that scripture, if you look at the book of Romans uh, 3 from verse 10 to 12, it says, There is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understand, there is none who seek God. For all have turned aside together, they have become useless. And there's none who does good, there's not, not even one. Hallelujah. Remember when they called Jesus the good man? And he started to tell them, no, there's none. There's none. There's none. So we saw there that there's none that is good. We cannot live on our own self-righteousness. The second type of righteousness that we can put on all the time is what we call the imputed righteousness imputed righteousness and that imputed righteousness uh, we, let's look at Philippians 3 8 to 9 Philippians 3 8 to 9 hallelujah Philippians 3 8 to 9. it says I count all things to be lost amen in view Philippians 3 8 to 9 in view of surpassing the value of knowing Christ yes what is more I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ my Lord, for whose sake I have lost everything. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Hallelujah. And verse 9, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ Jesus, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. That's the imputed righteousness. Righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Righteousness that comes. So sometimes when we are in the battle of life or the battlefield and the enemy keep throwing to us the things we have done. Some people think that they are going through certain things because certain somebody did something or they did something 10 years ago. But you are not living on your own righteousness anymore. Hallelujah. You are standing, you are putting on the breastplate of what? Of the righteousness of God. The Bible says, for him who knew no sin was made to be seen. That you and I could be what? Made the righteousness of God. If anybody could claim being righteous at all, I think Paul is number one. An Hebrew of Hebrew. You know, a man who learned under Galileo. And a man who suffered so many things for Christ and yet never gave up. But we cannot live under our own righteousness. We must live under the imputed righteousness. So if we put on any breastplate, we are in a battle, know that you are standing on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are standing on what? And that's why the Bible says that we should come boldly before the grace of mercy. One of the reasons why we can't come boldly sometimes is because we are trying to see our own righteousness. Compare what we have done to say, I can't really go and ask for grace. But it says we should come boldly before the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy in the time that we have a need. We can obtain grace for mercy. We can obtain grace for all our needs. Him that knew no sin has already been made sin on our behalf that we can become the righteousness, the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. So we impute on in the battlefield the righteousness of God. When you stand to pray, when you stand on the word of God, the gospel of peace, you know also that the breastplate that you put on to put your mind at peace, to put your heart, your viscera, also from running elter skelter, is that you are standing on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The third type of righteousness we want to look about, which is in addition to the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that we need to endeavor to put on is what we call, call practical righteousness. Amen. Practical. And I think we, we talked about this in one of our uh, um, messages a few months ago or so. We need to put on also practical righteousness. While imputed on us, assure us of the ultimate victory over Satan. Practical, natu- practical righteousness enables us to win the daily schemes of life, these daily challenges that we may come across us in life. That's what we call practical righteousness. When we talk about practical righteousness, we're talking about living a holy life. Hallelujah. Practical righteousness, living a holy life. You know, poor desire that we live 
you know, uh, we, we desire for us for practical righteousness to match the righteousness that has already been given unto us. And I think we look at this scripture several months ago. I believe that's uh, in Philippians 3.14. Philippians 3.14. Hallelujah. It says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. And I, I don't know. I remember vividly we talked about it. We press on. Hallelujah. We press on to reach. There's a goal. There's an heavenly goal that has already been accomplished for us. It says, I I, I press on to the heavenly goal for which God has called us to heaven word in Christ Jesus. That's living our life daily in holiness. Living our life daily in righteousness. What does the next verse say? It says, and okay. Uh, if you look at King James Version, I like King James Version. I think that's what it says. I press on daily so that I can apprehend that which has been already apprehended for us. Amen. So, because we are not there yet, doesn't mean we should just say, oh, Christ has imputed righteousness for us. We don't need to do anything. Hallelujah. Yes, God has apprehended righteousness for us. But Paul said that I press on daily. I march on daily so that I can get to what has already been apprehended for me. God has already called me righteous. And I am righteous. And God has already given me righteousness. Now my job as I live my daily life is continue to do what? Is continue to press forward. To march forward. Hallelujah. So that I can, I can apprehend that which I can myself to have apprehended. But this one thing, I forget those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which were before. And verse 14. What does verse 14 say in this King James Version? It says, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, two righteousness that we must put. I'm not talking about, I'm not saying one righteousness is bigger than the other, but the way we have to live our life, the shield, the breastplate of righteousness we need to put on is the imputed righteousness of Christ. And while we'll have that on, we must continue to press forward. Hallelujah. So that we can become that goal. We can become what Christ has already apprehended for us. Hallelujah. It can really become practical. People can see it. We can see it. God can see it. And that's how we need to fight the battle of life. Some things that are battles to us are things that we get ourselves into. Because we refuse to live a holy life. Amen. Some things, it's not the devil, but we are the one that put ourselves into it. We are the one that put our hands into it. You know, we have many uh, lust of the flesh, uh, the, the lust of the eyes, and things that we, we get ourselves into. And now, it takes away the peace of God from us. We now start to be in a battle war zone with ourselves, with God, and with other human beings. But when we learn to put on the breastplate, hallelujah, of righteousness, we protect our heart, we protect our viscera, no weapon of the enemy fashioned against us shall prosper. No, in every battle, you must have your shoe, your feet fitted with the gospel of peace that guarantees you that you're standing firm, hallelujah. And make sure you protect what? You protect your heart with the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. The righteousness imputed by God, the righteousness of living a holy life, and then whatever battle comes, there is victory that is guaranteed for us. And that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. That will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Protect your heart, protect your viscera, protect your thoughts, protect the reports that you get. Bible says, whose report shall we believe? Hallelujah. Who as the person that the, that the harm of the Lord has been revealed unto? Whose report are you going to believe? Who will believe the report of the Lord? Hallelujah. Who will believe the report of Joshua and Caleb that says, though there may be giants in the land, we are still able to what? To able to overcome. Hallelujah. 
we are the ones that will believe in our heart that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because what? God is with us. Hallelujah. That's what we have in our heart and that's what we believe. Hallelujah. We will believe that the God of heaven that has begun any good work in our life, definitely, it will not push us halfway and then leave us stranded. Amen. That he that has begun a good work will surely do what? We surely perfect it. Hallelujah. We know that we are not here by accident. We are here by a purpose. And we know it's taught to us. us. Hallelujah. And we believe that thought that you thought that will bring us peace. Thoughts that will bring us the prosperity of God is what God has for us. And that's what we wear as a breastplate of righteousness in our journey. So whatever comes our way, we know that standing on the word of God, standing by faith in the word of God, we can march on and victory is us in the name of Jesus. I pray for you this morning in the name of Jesus. Everywhere where the enemy has distorted your thoughts, your heart, your imagination, where anywhere that the enemy has made you to believe otherwise, has made you to believe wrongly, we cancel all those wrong thoughts in the name of Jesus. We cancel all those wrong imagination in the name of Jesus. There are some people that the enemy is just pushing thoughts to their heart, just pushing, you know, if it was positive thought, it would be good, but they are all negative thoughts. Every negative thought. That's why the Bible says that every thought that exalted itself against the imagination of God, it says we'll pull them down. It says pulling down every stronghold. We pull down every stronghold, every negative thought, every negative imagination by the power in the blood of Jesus. We cancel them over you and over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel them over your endeavor in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will always believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. You will always believe, you will always wear the breastplate of righteousness. And the God of heaven will see to it that the victory that has been won already for you and I will manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we'll pray. Amen.